Hi, my name is Scoomana Queen, and I'm going to teach you how to build a Hackintosh right now. <laughs> now, the first thing you want to keep in mind in building a Hackintosh, you want to look at the big screen, the big picture. After all, Macs have a huge screen, huge. And for this, I chose a 23-inch Samsung 1080p high-definition flat screen LED, so it's going to be very bright. So, this is the first step right here. Get yourself a nice monitor. Don't use one of those old CRT monitors. Those monitors are so old. They look like crap. They probably turn yellow. Get yourself a nice one. They're decently priced. You can go on the internet. I'm not going to give any certain websites out, but they're out there. You know which ones to go to. Um, but one that has a egg, that's probably the favorite one to go to. Or you can go to Amazon or Google it! <laughs> so, we're going to move on. Another thing, make sure you get a warranty for some of your parts. This monitor back here, brand new, something might happen. If something happens, you want to be SOL. Get yourself a square trade warranty. Quote me on that one, because it's real good. If you crack the screen, do anything crazy, or if the stand breaks, or something retarded happens you are covered and you don't have to buy another one of those <laughs> the next piece of hardware that you will need of course is a keyboard and for this Hackintosh setup I will recommend this IROX Macintosh keyboard of course you can always go to the Macintosh website and spend two million dollars on a keyboard not really, but you can save some money by using one of these. It has all the Apple keyboard features on there. That little tilde looking thing, option control, yeah, it works. So, this is where it's at. Unless you're a baller. I'm not. <laughs> Alright, so the next piece of information I'm about to give to you all, uh, I've based off of a couple websites here, uh, but the biggest one that I want to throughout there is called No Film School. Uh, there is a guy on there who recommended a particular build. This is the one that we're going to be working on right now. And uh, you can go to nofilmschool.com. Again, that's www.nofilmschool.com. That's where you will get all the information about this particular build that we're going to be working on today. Of course, the most important thing that we're going to need here is this. Snow Leopard OS X. Now, of course, this Hackintosh is not going to self load off of this here. What we're going to need is a bootloader. There are plenty of them out there. What we're going to use is Cakewalk. I'll walk you through that. <laughs> now, when you build a Hackintosh, you have to be very specific with your parts. If you don't, you're going to run into a lot of problems, and we're going to save you problems today and building a Hackintosh the right way the first time around. So the product that we're going to recommend here is this Gigabyte X58A UD3R. Okay, you can order this anywhere off the internet. Uh, you definitely need this. If you sway away from this at all, don't ask me no questions or anything else because I can't help you. Sorry. <laughs> um, also, um, you want to get some memory. Uh, I picked six gigs worth of memory by uh, Overclocks, whatever they call it, OCZ. Pretty good company. Um, with this motherboard here, this motherboard, you can get about 24 gigs, I believe. That's a lot of horsepower, but for this, we're only going to mix with about six gigs. And the horsepower. If you can afford it, get the best. This isn't the best, but this is what we're going to use. So make sure, uh, yeah, it's Intel. If you use anything like AMD or anything crazy like that, I can't help you. Um, even though I'm new to the scene of Hackintoshery, uh, I can guide you through guides and websites or whatever kind of help you need to accomplish your goal. On this, we're going to build a nice, solid Hackintosh.
now for this next part uh, we're going to be going under the hood of computers now if you're not really down with getting your hands into computers this is not for you at all I would highly recommend watching a couple of videos on how to build a computer because this next step here you can either make or break your Hackintosh or the whole motherboard as a whole so make sure you do have some experience I've been building computers ever since I was a little kid uh, when there's those old socket A motherboards AMD just disgusting I remember the <laughs> that stuff was crazy back then but I have the experience and I want you to always have the experience too because if you don't you're gonna burn your money away like fire <laughs> alright so this next part uh, we're talking about motherboards and this is the motherboard right here that we're gonna be uh, installing the uh, X58A UD3R this is a big motherboard motherboards are getting bigger these days I remember uh, some of the smaller ones can almost fit in the palm of your hand but this is a big one make sure this is the anti electrostatic wrap around here if you handle this barehanded and if you shock this motherboard you are SOL the next thing we want to take in consideration is the case I've got a really really big case and if you don't have a really big one, size does matter. That's what she said. Anyways, uh, you need a really big case. Now, I've got a super big Cooler Master case. Full ATX. Humongous. Massive. Now, I highly recommend one of those or one of those Antec cases, huge. Uh, again, go to the nofilmschool.com. I believe it's a P180 or P183 uh, if you want to install an additional cooler on there. But I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, Cooler Master one, and that's what we're going to use our chassis for. Again, the chassis is just like the car, the shell. Got it? <laughs> Hope you learned something. Now, uh you're gonna need something called a power supply again by Cooler Master you pretty much wanna try to coincide your case and power supply together because not all power supplies are created equally and what I mean is some of them come with really weird dimensions um, a lot of cases they come with the same type dimension as a case so sort of coincide those together you, you don't really have to you can but I would highly recommend it but this is a big one. This is like the heart and soul. This is the what gives the electricity to the whole computer, throughout the computer. If this goes out, you ain't using no computer, baby. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is install this into our nice Cooler Master case. Uh, maybe I can pull a box out or something if you want to see what that looks like. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and install this into our chassis. So, you remember I told you that I would show you the box? You ready? Uh, uh, uh. This is how big this sucker is. This sucker is huge. I feel like I should be playing some sort of empire music. sucker is huge that's what she said and uh, the actual physical case itself is really big we gotta get this box out of here that was a big boom <laughs> 